Today we're going to add a huge touch of modernization to the interior of my 1990 Mustang LX. This is the Coda Digital's VHX digital gauge cluster fitting your 1990 through 1993 Mustang LX. It's available in several different finishes. We're going with the carbon fiber face with the blue lights, but it's also available with a carbon fiber with red lights and also black faces or silver faces with your choice of red, blue, or white LEDs. This includes this control box, which is mounted remotely, and then one single cable to go to this to make for a much easier installation. Now, I'll be able to use a lot of your factory sensors, but everything else needed for installation is included. This cluster is going to be a direct replacement for your factory cluster and features speedometer, tachometer, fuel level, oil pressure, water temperature, and voltage just like your factory cluster. It also includes an LCD mesh center and all the factory indicators. All the gauges have micro-controlled stepper motors making for very accurate readouts. And again, it's going to be completely backlit display in your choice of colors, including lighting for the indicators themselves. The outboard control motor can be mounted anywhere and includes the single cable to connect to the cluster. For this installation, we need a quarter inch ratchet, eight millimeter socket, three eighth ratchet, 11 16th socket, three quarter socket, 12 inch extension, nine sixteenth wrench, 11 sixteenth wrench, Phillips head screwdriver, standard flathead screwdriver, small flathead screwdriver, T20 Torx bit, wiring tools, and a test light. The first step in the process of the installation is obviously to remove our factory clusters. The first thing we're going to do is get underneath the dash, remove the knee pad, then work our way up and remove the cluster from the car. To remove this is going to be three screws underneath. And then pop off the clips. All right, next this metal trim comes off here. There's gonna be two screws holding this in. All right, now we're back up top. We're gonna to work on the cluster trim here. Little clips back here with these. So you pop the front and then you can carefully pop it. And then remove the plugs. Before the cluster housing come out, we have to remove the columns trim here for the steering column. Give me two Phillips head screws underneath. Unscrew those and you can remove the trim. All right, the last step of removing the console trim is going to be these two torque screws. You're up here on top of the dash. Let's fish the wires through the housing here. Carefully remove it. All right, the housing off, now we're down to the cluster. There's four screws holding it on. There's gonna be two over here, one on top, and one on this side. At this point, the cluster's unbolted. It's only gonna pull out so far because you have the harnesses behind the back and the speedometer cable. So the trick here is you kinda wanna pull it out as far as you can, and reach back and start disconnecting things. Plugs in the bottom, you're gonna squeeze on both sides to release them. Same with the speedometer, just push in, squeeze to release. And remove the cluster. Now when it comes to wiring the cluster, if you can wire up a car stereo, you can install a Dakota digital cluster. So the first thing to do is the three main connections we're gonna need, which is gonna be a constant power, a switched power, and ground. We grab constant power from under the hood. You wanna make sure you have to add this wire, make sure you put a good 10 amp fuse on it, then fish the wire inside to wherever you're gonna mount the control box.
I went up to fish some wires into the interior. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull the speedometer cable because the Dakota Digital Cluster actually works off a GPS, so you won't need the cable anymore. Makes an excellent place to fish wires in your interior. Now, if you can salvage the original grommet, use it. If not, make sure you do put a grommet in the hole so the wire doesn't get damaged. So we have our constant power running to the interior. What we're gonna do now is there's two additional harnesses that have to be fished from the engine bay. One is for oil pressure, then one is for water temperature. So what we're gonna do now is actually just put the wiring in place fish those harnesses inside as well, so that way all of our wiring under the hood is finished at the same time. All right, we're in the wire, so now we're gonna make the connections and install the supplied sensors. Now the coolant sensor is gonna go right here. So you're gonna pop this cap off, move the factory wiring aside, and then remove the sensor. So once you remove your sensor, you wanna figure out the correct adapter. Several ones are included, line it up, Make sure it's the right size, then install some Teflon tape and install it in the factory location. All right, with the adapter installed, now we can actually install the coolant sensor itself. All right, with the sensor installed, now you can fish the harness over and plug it in. Once you do that, we're gonna move on to the oil sender. Now, the oil sending unit is located right down here, basically on top of your filter. There's gonna be an extension attached to it, you can actually unthread the sensor from the extension, but if it does get stuck, you can pull your whole assembly off and bolt it back on as one piece. Now we're not going to bore you showing you the actual connections, but we're going to show you the wires that we're using. Now what you're going to want to do is double check that these colors are correct because this will fit 90 through 93, but we have seen a couple small differences in the wire colors. So we're going to show you what is working for us. And again, check these before you actually make the connections and then connect them to the control box. The first connection we have to make underneath here is going to be the accessory power of the 12 volt switched. On the driver side plug, it's going to be the red wire with a yellow tracer. The next connection again over on the driver's side is going to be the high beam indicator. That's going to be the gray wire here with the white tracer. Then the next connection again on the driver's side is going to be the dimmer switch. That's going to be the light blue with the red tracer. And then the last connection over here on the driver's side plug is going to be for our tack signal, which is the wire right here, green with a yellow tracer. Now over here on the passenger side, we're going to make two connections. First one's the fuel sending unit. It's going to be the yellow wire here with the white stripe. Then the second connection over here is going to be the right turn signal. 
and it's gonna be the white wire here with the light blue stripe. You're gonna tap into all of these wires, then what we're gonna do is actually run an extension wire to run down to our control box, which we're mounting behind our radio. Now, obviously there's a lot of wires and connections you have to make to make this cluster work. Now, what I'd suggest, since no one's probably gonna have that many different color wires, is get a label maker, which you can pick up cheap, like 20 bucks probably, or even some tape, and just label each wire. That'll make it a lot easier when making the connections, and also easier if the troubleshoot in the future. All right, so now we've made all of our wires and extended everything, now is the tedious part number two, which is connecting everything to this brain box so that one cable can go up to our cluster. Basically, all the wires that we just labeled from the cluster, plus the ones we ran from the engine bay, all have a location that go on here. When you're in the process of doing the wiring, you'll also want to install these two switches. The one switch will switch between different RPM and settings on your display. The other one is for going into the menu and also allow you to do time, distance, and some other controls as well. These are both wired into the control panel and you want to find a good place to put them. In the case of our car, we already had an alarm hole drilled in this, so we've drilled a second one, put both switches right there, we can easily reach them. Now it's a little scary looking because we have a lot of wires connected here, but everything is connected that should work. So we're going to actually plug the cluster in and test it out. And this is the cable that's included. This can go in any one of these three plugs. It does not matter which one. And plug it in the back of the cluster. Now we can start it up and try it out. The first thing you want to do is just turn the key to the on switch. Make sure it lights up. Make sure the cluster does what it's supposed to. You see we got power to our voltage gauge, so that is working. The cluster is lit up like it's supposed to. Now we'll actually start the car and check everything else. All right, now fuel level you will have to set up, so don't worry about that right now. But our tack is working. We have voltage. We have oil pressure. We have our left turn signal. Right turn signal. Dimming for the headlights is normal. Check high beams. All right, everything's working. We can start cleaning it all up. We're planning on mounting the control box for the system behind our stereo. But you can mount it wherever you want. What we're gonna do now is basically hackle the speedometer. And in our case, we wanna use the GPS feature, which will require a separate box, which is available here at CJ Pony Parts. Now, what we're gonna do now is first figure out where we're gonna locate the box, and you can mount it pretty much anywhere as long as it's a reasonable distance from the main control box. In our case, we're gonna mount it right here behind our glove box on the heater box. All right, the first connection you're gonna to make to our GPS interface module is called the BIM wire, the BIM cable. That's gonna plug into the side of the GPS box and then go back to our main module. Once you have the BIM module connected, there's only actually two other connections you have to make to the GPS to make it work. One is going to be a 12 volt constant, which we're going to take the same connection we made to our main VHX module. And the second one is a speed control wire, which again is going to come from the VHX module over to our GPS interface. And once you're finished with all your connections, the cluster is going to say to please set the speed calibration. Now to do so, there's detailed instructions provided by Dakota Digital as far as how to do this. We're not going to go into the details, but basically it's something you can do in your driveway. There's no driving required, no nothing. You simply set it up, and as soon as you go for a ride, the GPS will be accurate. Now one of the reasons I do suggest using the GPS speedometer is that it's going to be the most accurate speedometer for the car. It doesn't matter if you change gear ratios in your rear, tire sizes, anything, the GPS model is gonna make sure your speed is always correct. All right, so we have our wiring all tucked in behind the radio. We fish the control cable up. Now we're gonna connect to the cluster and bolt the cluster in. The 
cluster and now we can reinstall the cluster housing. Now don't forget we have these in switches installed here. So make sure you fish the wires up below the cluster so you can plug these in. And again, don't forget to fish through these two wiring harnesses through the top corners. Cluster bolted down, we can reinstall our switches. All right, you reconnect your battery and your installation's finished. Well, the installation finished, there are two more things you have to do. You'll notice the screen says, please set speed cal and set fuel sender. You have to set the fuel sender so it knows the ohms of your tank. Now, Dakota provides detailed instructions that give you the correct numbers. As far as at the speed cal, what you're gonna do there is simply go into the menu, drive the car measured mile, and the speedometer is gonna be set. We're gonna show you how to set the fuel real quick by going into the menu. All right, now we're gonna set up the fuel gauge. What you wanna do is hold down switch one and then turn the key on. You'll see it goes in the setup mode. Then you want to flip through. You got setup tack, voltage, water, oil. When you get the fuel, hold it down. We want to set up the fuel sender. So again, hold it down. And it'll basically give you options here. Now what you want to do is on the Fox body, it's going to be 73 empty and 10 full. So you want to go to actually the setting is going to be F10 is the one we want. Hold it down and it'll say done and you're finished. The Dakota Digital VHX cluster looks absolutely amazing in my 90LX and these gauges are a lot better than the factory ones as well. They're fully programmable electronic gauges so it's a huge upgrade over the factory gauges plus the carbon fiber with the blue just absolutely amazing in the dash. Now as far as the setup goes this will do all the gauges like we showed you is programmable. This also will do 0 to 60, it'll do quarter miles, all kinds of cool stuff this cluster does. As far as the installation goes, it is time consuming. There's a lot of wiring. Give yourself about six to eight hours. Be back on the road in no time.